you a copy and we're going to talk about all of those things now so first i want to talk about what a birth plan is because obviously everybody thinks well i don't need a birth plan because you can't plan birth well yes and no so you can't plan birth but what you can plan and what you can do beforehand is you can be educated about your options so that when you are in the middle of labor you aren't trying to figure out what is this what does this do what are the risks what are the benefits um what do i even want in labor is not the time to try to figure that out right you need to know your preferences beforehand and so going through your birth plan ahead of time and creating out you know what your dream would look like what you're open to what you aren't open to it gives you space to understand your options and make an informed decision right so you can be educated beforehand so you know your, your options and what things are and what they're happening right and so what information should be included in your birth plan that is going to depend on you your desires um and also like your birthing place right so if you're having a hospital birth that might look different from um if you're having a home birth right because the the birthing spaces are just different um if you're giving birth in a facility that is like certified baby friendly then you may have to include less things than somebody that's giving birth in a facility that's not baby friendly because in a baby friendly facility some things are just the standard such as um like rooming in the golden hour being honored so those are things that you wouldn't have to necessarily like list out because they are the standard there and also just like a home birth versus a hospital birth so if you're having a home birth obviously you aren't auto you automatically you'll be Mommy. able to move Mommy. around <laughs> obviously you'll be able to move around freely of course you'll have all of your things there but then if you're giving birth in a hospital then you might have to list out more things so this is one reason why i don't necessarily like the idea of just saying hey can you send me your birth plan i'm just going to change the name at the top change the date change the location and take that to my provider because then you haven't explored all of your options and it's not necessarily tailored to you where you're giving birth at what you want um and your medical history right so depending on what we have going on during our pregnancy um that might change your birth plan or what you're able to do or what you need to do and this is why it should be more of a discussion so like if you think about the blog post that's on the site there's questions there's like something to think about and then there's questions for you to think about what you want and that is the most important thing birth plan shouldn't be copy and paste it should be you, your preferences, and you going through. So I want to say thank you to everybody who has hopped on. I see some doula friends. I see some of my amazing Ruth Health family. And I'm so, so, so thankful for all of you joining me. I'm Ray, a nurse, a doula, certified breastfeeding specialist here at Ruth Health. We are passionate about changing the way the face and the way that things are done for pregnant and postpartum people in this country. Um, and we are giving people access to care that they desperately need and giving y'all the support that y'all need. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for the support. We are talking about all things birth plans right now and i'm gonna just go through a list right of some things that you might want to include in the birth plan and one thing that is really popular is who is in the room with you um why are you giving birth during the birthing experience right so we know that obviously if you're having a home birth or a birthing center birth then you have a little bit more control because if you're at your house you kind of can just determine who's gonna come in but if you're having a hospital birthing experience which i just want to be clear i had a hospital birth right so i'm not hitting on hospital births at all um you have to be a little bit more clear like who you want in the room and so maybe you list out that you want you and your support person your partner your provider obviously the nurse is going to be there you can't kick them out necessarily 
you can't kick them all out um, but maybe you write on your birth plan that you don't want any students in there um, because I have seen in some hospitals where, I mean, there's just like, yeah, everybody come in. There's a person giving birth. We're all just going to take a look at it. We're going to see what's happening. And that can be really uncomfortable as the person giving birth. If you have all of these people that you don't know in the room. Um, so definitely who's in the room. What about monitoring? What are your options for monitoring? I mean, as we're thinking about these things and going down the list, you're going to see why it's so important um for you to not for the first time you bringing out your birth plan that shouldn't be in the room but this is a discussion that you need to have with your provider before you ever get to the hospital especially because you need to know what options are available so we're thinking about monitoring you need to ask your provider like what are my options you know can i um use the wireless monitors am i going to be required to be um in the bed getting monitored 24 7 uh, from the moment i get there until i deliver like what are my options so you these are questions that you need to talk to your provider about beforehand i see a question asking what services does ruth health offer so we offer c-section recovery programs we offer pelvic floor therapy and we offer lactation support and if you use the code tt20 you get 20 percent off any of your services and we also have some really cool packages that you can book as well so just check those out on the website you can use the link in the bio um what else monitoring but back to the birth plans uh pushing so what do you want your pushing experience to be like i mean i think like media shows us the typical like on your back pushing with people counting from zero to ten and telling you when to breathe and it's like they're controlling your pushing experience do you want that i mean if you want that that's cool like it's whatever you want but as an alternative you can ask that you don't want to be coached during pushing and you just want to push like as your body leads you to push do you want to be on your back or would you like to be in a squatting position would you like to be on all fours like talk about these things before you go into labor the same thing with like do you want access to the birthing ball? Um, what are your ideas about pain relief? What are your goals? What would you like to do? Would you like to be offered an epidural? Are you adamant like I want my epidural as soon as I get there? Pain relief and pain control is really important to me. Do you want this to be unmedicated? Like what are your goals and what are your options? These are things that you should talk to your provider about beforehand this let's see what else should we talk about in a birth plan um iv that could be a good thing um to talk about do you want an iv are you open to having an iv do you want continuous fluids in the iv and again some of these things will depend on your medical history the same with pitocin i know that is like the big rave on tiktok nowadays everybody wants to know should i get pitocin should i not get pitocin i'm not here to tell you yes you got to get pitocin no you should never get pitocin this is going to depend on your medical history what you're comfortable with the risks the benefits you know um and also not just about we're not gonna think just about labor and pushing but we'll also think about the immediate postpartum period in our birth plan right so we'll think about cord clamping do you want to do delayed cord clamping your placenta do you want to naturally deliver your placenta what do you want to do with the placenta once it's delivered are you taking it home with you are you you don't care you just want them to take it or whatever do you want to take a picture of it um what else um the golden hour do you want to just wait as long as things are obviously stable and all is fine with you and baby do you want to just do your skin to skin and soak up that golden hour maybe have that first latch and then allow them to do the height the way all of the things what are you going to do with that amazing vernix are you you want them to wipe it off or do you want to leave it on and rub it in do you want your baby to get a bath immediately all of these things can go on the birth plan um and also like feeding methods are you wanting support with lactation or are you formula feeding so all of these things should go on your birth plan 
some also other some good information to put on your birth plan is if you know that there is certain types of touch or things that you absolutely do not like or things that you absolutely do not want um then make that clear to your provider early on put that i would say put that like in bolded information on the birth plan and um and then anything that you're declining put that also in bolded information if you have like a birth plan that's just words only and everything is typed up in my experience i feel like birth plans that are like shorter and to the point are better than like two pages of paragraphs of like i don't want this i want this i don't want this um so if you have all words put the key phrases in bolded information if you have one of the birth plans that are just like pictures then obviously it's kind of shorter and you just have the no in front of whatever you want i know that was a lot of information so does anybody have any questions i'm gonna take a minute and scroll roll up to make sure I didn't miss anything because I have been talking a lot um so just give me a second and yes thank you so much for joining um a good place to start shimmer shine glow um congratulations an amazing place to start is by going to the link in the bio and going to our blog post on how to write a birth plan it's going to give you some information and it's going to give you some points to think about like what do you want absolutely i hope this video is saved if technology cooperates so that you'll be able to refer back to the information you are so 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 welcome um and i'm going to think about what else we can talk about with birth plans um let's talk about another thing is like who should get the birth plan right um i feel like now we think oh i just show up to the hospital with the birth plan and i kind of mentioned this a little earlier but no you should have a discussion about your birth plan with your provider well before like you ever show up to the hospital and the reason for that is when you make your birth plan and then you have that discussion with your provider you might have that discussion and they may be like um they may i'm sorry uh ruth health it we do telehealth so you could get us anywhere um so you might have this discussion with your provider and you might find that y'all are totally aligned right and they're like yeah i do this all the time yep i'm for delayed court clamping yep i can support you delivering in any position yep 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 everything's all good i'm good with everything but you might have a discussion with your provider and they might be like no i don't support this no i don't support that no we're not going to be able to do this no we're not going to be able to do that and that's some important information to find out before you go into delivery because if you're in labor and delivery with a provider that doesn't support anything that's on your birth plan it's kind of a big problem so this is why normally with my doula clients i do birth planning well in advance so that if there is a situation where we need well the person needs to switch providers or deliver in a different space there is time to find a provider in a birthing space that is aligned with their desires and what they want to do you do not want to enter into a birthing space where you are going to have to constantly fight over and over and over and over for your birth plan you want to be supported right whatever your desires are you deserve to be supported um so yes you might have to advocate a little bit you may have to reinforce the birth plan and say hey remember we talked about this because maybe you're delivering with somebody who is unfamiliar with you or there's a shift change and people are just new and coming into the experience and so they're kind of getting familiar with your desires but you don't want to go and deliver in a place where they don't support you in doing any of the things that you want to do right so I'm all about planning ahead. So even though you can't plan your birth, you can plan ahead and try to create this birthing experience that you want and deserve. 
Um, and obviously we know that first, if there's no guarantee that it's gonna go the way that you have planned for it to go or want it to go all of the time. Um, but in my experience, this is one of the benefits of talking about all of your options beforehand and having a birth plan because this way if things are shifting and changing you've already talked about these things you already know your options you already know some of the risks some of the benefits you already know some of these terms you've already um, spoken to your provider about what happens if um, and so if your provider comes into the room or if there is something that happens urgently you aren't trying to figure out okay what is this what does this mean what do I do if this or what happens if this like you already have some education and that can only help you make a more empowered um, decision and for some people for example some people who have home births choose to have a transfer plan as well so it's not only planning for your dream but okay what if your dream doesn't happen then what and so you can build that information into your birth plan so that you know well if this happens then i want this for example if your plan was to have an unmedicated birth um you wanted to deliver in a position that wasn't just flat on your back but you put the bottom of your birth plan, if I do get an epidural, I still would like the option to utilize the peanut ball so that I can still move around. And I would like to lower the bottom half of the bed so that gravity can work with me. Boom, there we go. Maybe I didn't, you know, follow my plan to the T about having an unmedicated birth, but I already knew my options. So I already knew, you know, how to navigate these changes and so this is why i recommend for everybody to have a birth plan and to talk about all of the options um it's also a benefit of having services and doulas and supportive providers so i've been talking for a while again so i am going to double check to make sure that i didn't miss anything again i'm ray one of the providers here at Ruth Health and we provide C-section recovery programs, pelvic floor therapy, lactation support. You can find all of our services when you go to the link in bio and there's a special coupon code for my new TikTok family which I am super grateful for all of you. Um, I answered a question about us providing telehealth services which is one of our goals which is to make care accessible and affordable. And I have a question about water birth. So yeah, what do you want to talk about about water birth? Do do I recommend? Do I recommend it for me? Do I recommend it for everybody? No, I think it depends on you. What soothes you? What's comfortable for you? There are some clients that I have worked with who are like, Nah, I want a land birth. I don't want a water birth. And then there are some people like me who my desire was to have water birth because I found it very soothing and comforting. So it kind of depends on you. It kind of depends on you. Um, let me think. Do we have any? more questions about birth plans about what to um, include in them anything specific that you'd like to talk about i'm here happy to talk about it for um a few minutes if you have any questions otherwise i've always almost been talking for almost 30 minutes <laughs> And so I can see that I'm going to have to do a part two. So I would like to thank you all for joining me tonight. I really enjoyed spending some time with my new family. I've been so excited to connect with so many people here on TikTok. So many amazing people. We've shared our stories together. We have similar experiences. Um, and it's just been really fun growing with you guys. Please, please, please be sure to check out, check us out at Ruth Health. We are here. We're waiting to support and serve you. Um, we just want to see people support it. Yeah, let me know. What are your questions? You have a lot of questions. So, yes, 
send them away and even if i don't talk about them now i'm gonna be going live so much more so maybe i can make one of them a topic for the live or answer in a video so send me all the questions and be sure to use the link in the bio check out the coupon code and yeah i'm so excited to keep spreading the information and education